This VAWatchdog.org news video is brought to you by Bergman and Moore, LLC. Former VA attorneys now fighting VA for you. Call Bergman and Moore at 877-838-2889 or on the web at vetlawyers.com. Finally tonight, suicides in the military. News Hour correspondent Betty Ann Bowser reports for our health unit, a partnership with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. By most accounts, Specialist Scott Eiswert was a happy, outgoing father of three when he was deployed to Iraq in 2004 as a driver for the Tennessee Army National Guard. Before he went, oh my gosh, he was fun and caring and giving and loved people. He was just a big kid. But during his one year in the war zone, he experienced a lot of stress. There were close calls with roadside bombs. On one occasion, he saw three of his friends blown up. I was not prepared for the man that came home. No one told me what to prepare for, what to look for. No one said he would be different. No one said he'd be angry. Nobody told me how different he would be when he got home. When Eisward came home in December of 2005, he was different, radically different. He was very angry. One of the girls said, I want my daddy back. That hurt him really, really bad. They said, you, you're not my daddy. And I remember one time when I had went to work and the girls had called me and they had locked themselves in a, their room. They were so afraid of him. He was just screaming. He was always screaming once he got home. And there were constant nightmares. About him dying a lot of times. That's what they were about. Or grenades or bombs and, and roadsides and people being dead. It was always about people being dead. You know, months before Seth, you tell me, he was, I feel like there's dead people around me all the time. In May, Eisworth became extremely depressed when a National Guard colleague told him their unit was being sent back to Iraq. A few days after hearing that news, he shot himself to death here in the family home in Greenville. The Pentagon knows Eisworth was not an isolated case. The Army, the National Guard, and the Veterans Administration all acknowledge suicide is a growing problem among Iraq and Afghanistan war vets. The Army says suicides among its active duty personnel have doubled in recent years, with almost 700 since the year 2000. If current trends continue, suicide will eventually surpass the civilian rate of 19 suicides per 100,000 people. Other alarming statistics, attempted suicides and self-injuries have quadrupled over the past six years. Got a weapon? The Army thinks, unlike Got previous another. wars, that multiple redeployments may be a factor, along with failed relationships and financial problems. Colonel Elsbeth Ritchie is the Army's top psychiatrist. Our research supports the more deployments that you have, the higher the likelihood of anxiety, depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder. In soldiers who had deployed once, about 12% had symptoms of anxiety, depression, and PTSD. If you had deployed three times, that number rose from 12 to 27%. So there clearly is an impact of repeat deployments on the mental health of soldiers. I think of this as first aid. You don't need it till you need it. Everyone One here, of the things the Army that. is doing to help soldiers readjust to home life yeah, when they return from a war zone quickly. is a program Please called want, Battle Mind. When in doubt, think slower. Go slower. Slow down. Run largely by chaplains like Lieutenant Colonel William uh, Rawson, Battle Mind includes a strong suicide uh, prevention message. Okay. Maybe you have some trouble sleeping or you, you, you have a nightmare in the middle of the night, or you're agitated, give it 90 days and see if after 90 days you haven't made that transition. If you still have some issues, find some, some professional help. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of smarts. The Army plans to make battle mines something every soldier is exposed to. When the troops come home and leave the active duty ranks, they are eligible for medical care at the Veterans Administration. The VA says the suicide rate among male veterans it serves under the age of 29 hit an all-time high in 2006. Those in that age group 
are more than twice as likely to commit suicide as people in the general population. But Dr. James Peake, secretary of the VA, says so far his data show no correlation between those war experiences and suicide. It is the same kinds of issues that um, have to do with suicide in the general population. It is the issues of failed relationships, senses of hopelessness, transitions in life um, that, that are at the root cause. So how much of an element is the war experience? Some of the data that we're looking at suggests that those who haven't necessarily deployed, who haven't deployed overseas, um, have a, a higher rate of suicide than some of those who have deployed. So it's not a, we're, we're not making that direct correlation with combat. Paul Sullivan, director of the advocacy organization Veterans for Common Sense, disagrees. He worked as a senior data manager at the VA for six years. Sullivan's organization sued the VA, claiming it does not deliver adequate mental health care. But the judge who heard the case ruled his court lacked jurisdiction in the matter. The number one reason why. VAWatchdog.org, the nation's number one independent veterans website. On the web at VAWatchdog.org.